Audio Jungle. Watch WWE Presents, the 10 ways to make WWE better. Number 10, the commentary. As the main voices we hear during WWE television and pay-per-views, you'd imagine the WWE would entrust the most experienced and professional commentators with the job of relaying storylines and explaining wrestling moves to the audience, not JBL, Michael Cole, and Byron Saxton. And if that isn't bad enough, when Lawler got suspended recently, we got David No Personality Otunga commentating SmackDown. Are you serious? Corey Graves, Renee Young, and Mauro Ranallo especially all would fit much better into the roles as proven by their work in NXT, pay-per-view pre-shows, and SmackDown respectively. Whenever Cole fake laughs, JBL makes an incorrect reference, or Byron says, well, anything, fans at home groan and wish their ears weren't working that night. Hopefully WWE notices their mistakes and puts some proper commentary on their shows. God's sake, at least remove Saxton. Number 9. Turn Seth Rollins' Face Quick show of hands to anyone who watched Extreme Rules Live. Who marked out when they saw Seth Rollins attack Roman Reigns? Oh, uh, everybody. Okay, how about this? Who thought that Rollins was returning as a face? Sure made sense, didn't it? One of the best professional wrestlers with great mic skills returns after multiple months out of injury to attack the, may I remind you, very hated man, Roman Reigns, because he has the title that Rollins never lost. All this paired with a WWE 24 special on Rollins about losing his title to injury, wanting to return at WrestleMania but not being able to, and finally his actual return. It was all set up so well for him to be the hero. This was the absolute perfect way to turn Rollins' face. It'd be just like Triple H when he returned at the Royal Rumble in 2002. He was a heel, but he was so good and likable that he ascended into becoming a fan favorite. Not only would it have been great for Rollins, it was the perfect way to turn Roman heel, Reigns could finally let loose on the fans for cheering the man that backstabbed him, yet boo him even though he was the top good guy doing the charities and special events for the fans. Having the acrobatic and charismatic Rollins stay as a heel was a horrible decision, and it's just throwing money away. Number 8. Remove Juvenile Humor Almost all of us watched wrestling as children, and still to this day many children watch the program and attend the shows live in the audience. However, this doesn't mean the shows should be so focused on entertaining children. Adult viewers were slapped right in the face whenever Hornswoggle came out, or when DX would drop poo on Vince McMahon and say that he loves cock. It's just pathetic and embarrassing. You can try and be funny with the product, but do it in different ways. Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho today are perfect examples of that. Owens with his mid-match comments and Jericho making a catchphrase out of the word stupid idiot are very entertaining. Just because it's a PG show doesn't mean it should try and imitate a Pixar movie. Number 7. Less Product Let's take a quick look at all the current shows owned by WWE that you can spend time watching, shall we? You got your wrestling shows, Raw, SmackDown, Superstars, Main Event, NXT, and around 12 pay-per-views a year, which, let's be honest here, there's going to be a brand split coming up, so there's probably going to be even more pay-per-views, plus the few NXT TakeOver events held each year, as well as the entire vault of wrestling stored on the WWE Network that includes not only the WWE, but also WCW and ECW. And speaking of the network that costs $9.99, you've also got all those originals. Table of Three, Legends with JBL, Unfiltered with Renee Young, Swerve, Breaking Ground Camp, WWE, The Edge and Christian Show, Total Divas, Ride Along, WWE 24, Legends House of Stone Cold Podcast, and a Partridge. Also taking in consideration that WrestleMania this year was like six hours long, and you might understand why I use the word overexposure when talking about WWE talent. Number six, unscripted promos. In case you couldn't tell by the bland words that come out of Roman Reigns' mouth, he doesn't come up with what he says. All wrestlers have scripts that they have to follow, and in some cases it just works. Kevin Owens and The New Day come to mind as great talkers of the current day, but the main issue here obviously is Roman Reigns. He just can't talk, it's horrible, and while he isn't the only one, he's the easiest to pick out of the bunch as WWE want him to be their top guy. If they actually let him go out there and say what he wants, he'd make for a great heel. Promos are incredibly important, as the wrestlers talking is pretty much the entire build up for a storyline or feud, but if wrestlers sound boring because of lame writers, then the story just doesn't get across that well. Go back and watch Attitude Era promos or CM Punk's Pipe Bomb for some great examples of why unscripted promos are almost always better. Number 5. Keeping both shows separate but equal in case you're living under a rock or hate the internet or something, July 19th, 2016 will be the WWE brand split, held on SmackDown, which is going to be live for the first time in years and moved to Tuesday night. Raw and SmackDown will have one day in between them, meaning that when you watch SmackDown, you'll probably have a decent memory still of everything that Raw looked like and what happened during it. 
This means that if everything is the same between both shows, it will be pointless for there to even be different brands. Raw and SmackDown should get different sets, maybe keep Raw's set the same, but give SmackDown that badass fist set from the mid-2000s. Split the roster fairly and also keep the commentary teams separate. And as mentioned before, use commentators that actually have talent. You can even split up the writing team between the brands. Raw and SmackDown have to be equals even though they're separate, so the obvious first thing to change is making Raw 3 hours. Please, for the love of God, do not make SmackDown 3 hours. We do not need 6 hours of WWE television within 48 hours. Even more when you think of the pay-per-view weeks. Don't let the wrestlers be able to jump back and forth between shows. Keep them on their brand or else it won't be a brand. Hopefully WWE doesn't get bored and continue to just have Raw be the flagship show and turn SmackDown into the boring, less interesting younger brother that it's been for the last few years. Number 4. Utilizing the Talent Damian Sandow, Cody Rhodes, Zack Ryder, Apollo Crews, Baron Corbin, Fandango, Tyler Breeze, Naomi, Becky Lynch, The Ascension, The Vaude Villains, Dolph Ziggler, The Usos, The Dudleys, everyone in the Social Outcasts, Neville, Dean Ambrose pre Money in the Bank 2016, Ryback, The Lucha Dragons, Paige, and most criminally, The Wyatt Family. My point's pretty clear here, and that's hardly the tip of the misused talent iceberg. Number 3. Fix 50 50 Booking. Dolph Ziggler vs. Baron Corbin is the perfect example of this, a long-running feud that drags out way too far. Almost every feud nowadays has been the same thing. One guy wins, then the other guy wins, then they have a final blow-off match, or sometimes even more than that. As the previous point proved, WWE have plenty of talent to be using, so that's not the problem. It's the stale booking of the stale writers. Styles vs. Jericho lasted from the night after the Royal Rumble all the way to WrestleMania, yet during that time Damian Sandow wasn't in a single match on Raw. Surely they can get rid of the typical 3 month long pay-per-view feuds and get some more people into the picture and get more storylines and feuds going on. Sure would be a lot more entertaining than watching Apollo Crews and Sheamus trade wins back and forth for a month. Number 2. Booking Credible Champions and Challengers Titus O'Neil recently has been in a little feud with Rusev over the United States Championship. Why exactly was Titus deserving of this? Sure he did win a battle royal on the May 2nd 2016 edition of Raw, but before that he had spent months out from a suspension. He had been off WWE TV for weeks and then comes back and suddenly he's in the title picture? Why, because he's a credible challenger to Rusev's US title? Of course not, it's just so Rusev has someone to crush. Speaking of the US title, Rusev is doing okay with it, but before Rusev had the title, it hadn't been credible since Cena had it way back between WrestleMania and Hell in a Cell 2015. Once Del Rio and Kalisto traded wins in, yeah that's right, a 50-50 booked feud, the US title meant absolutely nothing. Neither men appeared as credible champions after a while, and once Ryback got into the feud with Kalisto, it really took a drop. Who the hell was Ryback to be in the title picture? Champions and their challengers should be booked to win multiple matches and look strong a long while before getting the belt or being able to make the challenge for said belt. Not do nothing and suddenly win one or two matches and boom, you're qualified. Number 1. Listening to the fans Of course this is number 1. Look at how great WrestleMania 30 ended up being and then think about how much of it was because WWE had finally listened to the fans after their months of clamoring for Daniel Bryan and to put the title on him. Vince McMahon is an incredibly stubborn man, and when he wants something, he makes sure it happens. Just look at Roman Reigns. Since The Shield broke up, he's pretty much been the most hated wrestler in the company based on fan reaction aside from, I don't know, maybe Eva Marie. Yet he always seems to be pushed as the top guy in the company, especially since Royal Rumble 2015. Seth Rollins may have been our champion, but Roman Reigns was always being positioned to win the title and be the top guy, something that no one aside from Vince McMahon wanted to happen. It's simple, you have an incredibly large audience. If they're extremely into something or extremely against something, which usually they are, just listen to them and give them what they want. What's the point of pushing Roman Reigns to the top if you know for a fact you're losing money? I've always heard big things about Vince McMahon being this risk taker, but the biggest risk he takes these days is going against what the fans want seeing how long it'll work for him. Thankfully, as of Money in the Bank 2016, Dean Ambrose is our champion, someone who's much so deserved that position, and 2016 is looking like heaven compared to 2015's hell. WWE are slowly listening to the fans more, but this still needs to top the list as the most important factor that WWE isn't 100% into yet. This has been D Wicked from Watch WWE. If you enjoyed, like the video and subscribe for more awesome wrestling content. Thanks for watching.